why metaverse is the future of work and how to get rich from it. Throughout history, technological leaps have resulted in the birth of entirely new industries and economies. Another leap is taking place known as the metaverse. Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about why metaverse is the future of work and how to get rich from it. Make sure to watch till the end so you don't miss anything. Without further ado, let's get started. In 1991, the first ever website went live and it looked like nothing more than a page with some text on it. A few years later, another website hosted a video, just a simple video. Then fast forward to the era where we now live in, YouTubers having a large audience than entire news outlets. Throughout history, technology has made leaps that have created entirely new industries and economies. Now let's talk about the future we are experiencing in the present time. It's called metaverse, and it's not just a term. Every news outlet has been painting a dystopian future where we are all doomed to be mindless robots in a cog. A Ready Player One meets The Matrix, where Zuck controls everything since Mark Zuckerberg made the announcement. It's the easy narrative to go with and the one that gets the most clicks. This video isn't about big corporations trying to build the matrix. It's about you figuring out what's going on and how you can profit from it. And the best way to do that is to look at something on a smaller scale, like the metaverse. Have you seen the new Ariana Grande concert? No, not that usual one. The one with a full-fledged concert inside the game. Imagine telling someone a few years ago that Ariana Grande would be touring in Fortnite in 2021. It did, however, manage to create a unique experience with a completely new level of interaction. Last year, something similar happened with Travis Scott. What this type of experience excels at is connecting the real world with the virtual world. Right now, something very interesting is happening across all industries at the same time. The result is a disruption of how we interact with both worlds and what's truly possible. As BMW announced this new car in Rocket League, you have streaming companies like Netflix making video games and video game companies like Riot making Netflix shows. So what exactly is Metaverse? And why are we seeing this name everywhere? Saying what the Metaverse is now is like saying what the internet was in the 1990s. When it was said, you can now see the future with nothing more than a modem, a phone line, and a few dollars a month. There was no concept of social media, content creators, sharing platforms, trading platforms, platforms that make other platforms, and the list goes on. So technically, the Metaverse is whatever we build on it. It sits on the intersection of Web 3.0, blockchain, and virtual reality. It's the combination of these three elements that makes it possible. Let's start with Web 3.0, which is the next version of the internet. Web 1.0 looked like the website we told you earlier. It's just a page with a bunch of text and some hyperlinks to more pages with more text. There's no interaction. There's no user-generated content. It's basically just text on a screen. Web 2.0 is what we have now. It's largely community-based. Most of it is user-generated content, and it's highly interactive. You can do a lot of things on it, but one thing to keep in mind is that there is only one thing you can buy and own on the internet, and that is a domain name. Nobody in the world can create a website with the same domain name, and everything else is owned by corporations. Take this video for example. We made it, but if YouTube wants to, they can just poof it, and it's gone. Which brings us to Web 3.0. The most important thing you can do on Web 3.0 is own parts of the internet. Everything you make, buy, or sell on the internet is yours, and you have full rights to it. This is possible thanks to blockchain. There are the foundation blocks of value in the metaverse because of NFTs. You probably know what they are, but most people dismiss them as useless pixels on a screen for which some idiots are paying millions of dollars. Let's talk about money, or the story of money, or how money came to be, to better understand how NFTs work. What makes you think this piece of paper is worth $100? Who told you that someone would trade goods for your piece of paper? It's because we've agreed over the years that a dollar is worth a dollar, and that it always will be. It's a social construct that isn't even real, but it makes it simple to exchange things, so we all agree to use it. The value of an NFT is determined by how much those who embrace it decide it's worth, and it provides ownership because it can be tracked in the blockchain and cannot be copied. What you're missing is what NFTs could become in the future, similar to how websites change over time. Compare the first page to, say, Google Maps. They're both website pages that can be accessed via a specific link, but the difference is enormous. People say NFTs are a scam, but in exchange for digital art, they post their original creations on Instagram. So you have this way of truly owning something and using it in the context of Web 3.0. What would be an excellent way to interact with this virtual reality environment? Well, until holograms become a thing, virtual reality seems to be the only thing people talk about. 
It's the coolest thing we have right now, and it's the natural technological progression. So when someone says Facebook is building the metaverse, they're fundamentally wrong because they don't own the internet, blockchain, or virtual reality. It's like saying Apple built telecommunications when they launched the iPhone. And it doesn't matter what they, Google, or any other company does, because once blockchain becomes mainstream, the internet will be owned by individuals, which is something most people can't grasp. For example, imagine you're an artist who creates one song and sells it for $1 as an NFT in your smart contract. You add that every time your song is sold, you make 80% with 20% going to the seller. Let's say we buy your song for $1 and sell it to someone else for $1. In that case, the artist makes $1 from the first sale and 80 cents from the second sale, while we make 20 cents, and so on. Every time your song is sold, you automatically receive 80% of the proceeds in your digital wallet, with no involvement from Spotify, Apple Music, or a label. Not only do you make a lot more money, but your community also benefits from your efforts. And this is how individual ownership is taking hold in the metaverse. Everything in the metaverse follows this formula, and this is what the metaverse is all about, the rise of individual ownership. So how are you going to profit from it? You need to become a native of this new land in order to see new opportunities. You do this by getting educated. If you don't understand how this new thing works and dismiss it as a dystopian nightmare, you'll be left behind when reality, both natural and virtual, hits you. The good news is that we're still in the early stages. People are just starting to get educated in this space, and so there's a lot of room for growth and a whole new pie to eat from. As a thank you for watching all the way to the end, we have a bonus for you. Here are some pretty cool things happening in this space right now. You can buy digital land in video games. For the uneducated, this means wasting money on pixels. For the educated, it's the first step in owning parts of a video game. In the next 10 years, imagine yourself as a digital real estate investor. Imagine being a digital reseller. Now that Nike has patented digital goods and will sell virtual Air Jordans at some point in the future. And that's all for today, guys. Enlighten us with your thoughts. Share them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit subscribe to our channel and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos. And thank you for watching.